are you? <laughs> Time to go live. Mm -hmm. We are having a very licious live today because we're talking berries. Mm -hmm. And this morning we um, had a little snack with this um, beautiful little English muffin topped with our chia jam. So make sure you see that recipe. Mm -hmm. It's just the strawberries and chia seeds blended together and poof, there it, we have jam. It's our two ingredient jam recipe. <laughs> it's so simple. <laughs> yeah, it was a great way to use up berries if you see they're about to mm -hmm. go bad on you. Um, it's not sweetened, so it's not, you know, don't expect that sweet, real sweet, sugary, sugary jammy mm -hmm. taste. But what we did was drizzle some honey on there and that made it taste really good. Yeah, and so this is the time of year where we're seeing berries. They're very springtime. They're growing everywhere. Don't they so grow in the north? The north. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys saw our bloopers, you'll see, like... We were just laughing so hard about that. It was like a thing. So. Yeah. Um, so they grow more in the north, the more the temperate, colder climates. Um, and so this time of year, you should see them a little bit cheaper uh, in the grocery store than they would be any other time of year. So stock up on them. They're really easy things like we just did to turn into a two ingredient jam. Um, you can also just throw them in the freezer. Like I'll even... Like Kara does the like really nice thing where she lays it out on the sheet tray and puts it in the freezer. Um, I actually, and then I put them in a bag. And then put them so in let a them bag. freeze while they're all separated so they're not stuck together and clumped. Yeah, because mine, like if I'm just doing um, blueberries or anything like that, they don't stick together. Like I just throw the whole pint or whatever in there and then they're, they're cool. So anyway, the point is, is they're easy to freeze. Mm -hmm. So then you can have them, you know, when they're, kind of maybe more out of season or uh, past their prime or you just have a ton because they were on sale, just mm -hmm. throw them in the freezer. And that's a huge tip for shopping seasonally anyway. Mm -hmm. When you see it, that they're um, usually foods that are right in season and in their prime, they're going to be on sale. They're going to be cheaper than normal because they're going to have a lot of it growing and the markets need to push it and move the product, right? So um, yeah, that's a good time. This is a great time to stock up on berries, mm -hmm. um, throw some in the freezer, save them for your smoothies, through mm -hmm. all through the summer and mm -hmm. all that yeah yeah and even right now in my farm box I'm actually getting corn yeah. um like here in Texas the seasons kind of come much quicker because it we're so temperate down here uh kind of and uh so the corn's coming in and I have had like three or four ears in the last two weeks and we don't eat corn super often so I'm like Oh my gosh, now I have eight corn ears of corn in my fridge. But I was thinking, okay, what I could do is just quickly blanch the corn, cut it off the cob, and throw that in the freezer, right? So I have the corn there so I don't have to let it go bad. So these are like little simple um, seasonal tips you can do when you get a big abundance That's a of, really good idea. of things. Yeah. 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 So we were just going to dive into some of the berry stuff. Um, you know, berries and heart health have been um, kind of going together for quite a few years now, which is really, really great. Um, but uh, I, I don't know if people really understand why that is. Um, and from a Chinese medicine perspective, it makes sense because um, the astringent and sour properties are very toning to muscles like the heart and like the blood vessels um, because we want those nice tight and toned. In America, where we see heart disease, now heart disease is not a common disease that we used to see hundreds of years ago. It was non-existent. It's a modern condition and that's because we have really poor quality food, high stress, things are very expansive, things aren't tight and toned and working properly and digesting our food properly, right? We're eating poor quality food, we're super stressed, so it's weakening the heart muscle, it's expanding the capillaries and the arteries and everything. And then of course we look at the liver for the sour property because that stimulates digest or uh, det excuse me detoxification in the liver which will filter our blood properly so then we don't have to worry about having blood clots thicker blood uh, viruses in our blood right which is common with heart disease because that's showing the liver isn't clearing it so just heart disease in general it, it should be called liver disease <laughs> because it's actually a condition of the liver. The heart is just an innocent bystander that's pumping. And we want to strengthen it, but we also want to look at the root cause because the root cause is actually coming from the liver. 
So that's what's going on with berries and why they're good for your heart. (laughs) Yeah. And something um, that was kind of uh, a little mind-blowing to me when we were thinking about doing the berry recipe, um, all these recipes we have for berries, and we think of berries as sweet, and they're really not sweet they're They're more they're more sour they're more bitter Mm -hmm. um and when you eat one just on its own you kind of get that but we're so used to incorporating them into muffins and pies Mm -hmm. and ice cream Mm -hmm. and having them with these sweet things but that's because they pair really well with the sweet because it's going to counteract it and gives you a little bit of that tart tartness to getting all those different flavors right and from like a culinary perspective on it you wouldn't salt berries you would put a little sugar on the berry which would help enhance the flavor Um, because salt is a flavor enhancer acids a flavor enhancer you can actually do it with acid as well because they have a bit of that sweet component Mm -hmm. you've probably had like balsamic vinegar and strawberries Mm -hmm. right that's a good play on that like sweet and sour um so but you wouldn't normally salt them um so just from like a cooking perspective you go more for the acid or for the sugar when you're trying to bring out the flavor of the berry um just something to kind of keep in mind so Mm -hmm. it can be fun to play around with that kind of stuff um and also the sugar acts just like salt would if you salt um an eggplant for example or even an onion right it pulls the water out Mm -hmm. well with berries um, in maybe more of a traditional jam, not like ours, but in a traditional jam, you would actually sprinkle it with sugar and let it sit there. And the same thing happens, the berries just start to fall apart and they call it macerate. So it's mm-hmm. macerating the berries and they start to create their own juice. So sugar does that to berries. So that's good kinda, one. Yeah. Good it's one. cool. It's fun. <laughs> um, and then, uh, gosh, like foraging, right? Mm-hmm. And when we were talking a little bit about this with the medicinal herbs, like they're kind of growing everywhere Mm -hmm. and blackberries and... Oh my gosh, right outside our kitchen window of Simply Seasonal right here. We live right (laughs) on this little, on the bike path. And this time of year, I look out my window every evening and there's people, like I just see butts of like people (laughs) reaching into the bushes, um, you know, risking their life within the snakes and whatever else Mm -hmm. is in there. And they're so sharp. There's blackberry bushes out there. And I don't know if they're blackberries or dewberries because we do get a lot of dewberries here um, that look like... Yeah, we do. do. Um, That look like blackberries. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's really interesting because I see families... I, I, every type of person is out there yeah. with their little buckets and I'm like those are my berries even on the side <laughs> of this like highway I was driving down to South Texas for a retreat a few weeks ago I was wondering why I saw all these people with these big buckets like the Home Depot buckets I was like what is going on and they're just like and then I noticed I was like oh they're collecting berries and then they were going to sell them on the side of the road because they're just all right there oh and gosh. I'm like good for them <laughs> like that's entrepreneurship I yeah. like that. Lemonade stand. <laughs> yeah, forage and sell. And, yeah. yeah. And I, I have to say that um, some of our favorite hikes are when you find berries along the way that you know you can eat. Um, I've done a lot of hiking in Alaska and, you know, blueberries and salmon. They have these salmon berries that are just, oh my gosh, they're like raspberries on steroids without all the seeds. They're so delicious. <laughs> they're really good. And you can see the bears all going at them also. The bears are so happy. They love, Aww. love, love berry season. <laughs> um, we've done hiking in North Carolina with our family. We're in the blueberries we're going and oh my gosh, it makes it so easy to have kids go on a hike. Like they forget that they're hiking. They stop complaining that it's all this effort and they're just going after blueberries along the whole way and it's nice do you ever come across uh schnozberries (laughs) schnozberry what's a schnozberry it tastes like schnozberries (laughs) danny that was for you i can't say the name barry without him making that joke (laughs) david hey oh my gosh david hi thank you for joining i just called out danny for being ridiculous um David's up in New York. Thank All you right. for joining us. You have lots of berries in New York, too. Yeah, yeah. Go forage. <laughs> David, oh, hi. <laughs> hey. 
Um, so then we also talked, well, I guess when we were just talking about foraging for berries and like the blackberries, when it comes to the dirty dozen list, um, so that's the list of vegetables and fruits that are usually higher in pesticide content because like we said in our episode of the porous skin, so they absorb it much more. Blackberries tend, they're not on the dirty dozen list like strawberries. Because they're growing one. right out there, no problem, yeah. Because they have their very robust, like, um, like in terms of an immune system, <laughs> like they're easy things to grow so they don't have to spray as many pesticides like they would a strawberry. Like strawberry like plants delicate. are very, very delicate. Um, birds, everything are going to want to eat it. The so bugs can get on it, no problem, because yeah. it doesn't have its own pesticide on yeah, it. Yeah, right. versus okay. the blackberries aren't on that dirty dozen list because even if they're not organic, they don't have to spray very much because they're really pointy and thorny and they, yeah, exactly. They have their own kind of built in thing. So, mm -hmm. so that's when we mentioned the dirty dozen list. Um, it's really important. Strawberries are number one. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we talked about how good they are for, um, fighting cancer and like all these antioxidants and all this stuff. And then if you're buying strawberries that are covered in Roundup, then you're just, counteracting what you're trying to yeah get out of the strawberry right you're getting so. something that can be cancer fighting uh -huh. and bringing in a carcinogen yeah. and giving yourself cancer okay I have done this taste test um, and it's really interesting I did it with a group in a workshop I got organic strawberries and conventional strawberries uh -huh. and I blind taste tested everybody oh. um, to see if they could tell which one was organic and which one was not organic and it was a really interesting experiment. Oh. Um, it was interesting because people, not everybody got the answer correct, but what everybody agreed on, and it's hard because, you know, one might be more ripe than the other or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Um, but the one thing that was consistent across everybody was that they tasted really different. Mm. One tasted more like a strawberry, mm. like I was a just more gonna say that more strawberry. Like. It's a, <laughs> yeah, like it I just had it. like a deeper flavor mm -hmm. than the other. But we didn't know. So which one is it? Is it the one that they grew to taste more like strawberry? So people, I think people got confused. So not everybody got that answer right. But we all said they taste really different, and mm -hmm. that's the that was the takeaway message mm -hmm. was that. They were very different from each other. Well, even when you slice a strawberry open, whether they're gr being grown out of season or they're more conventional and just grown in the masses, it's like white on the inside. Versus if you grow one that's like wild or from a backyard or organic, it's red on the inside, mm. right? So that's kind of applying to like that deeper flavor. Even if that flavor is sour, it's still a deeper strawberry and stronger flavor than mm. having something that's white on the inside, which is more bland and just isn't fully there, mm. right? I, um... Oh, right David. that's awesome <laughs> you just said we grow strawberries in nantucket and they are so much more flavorful same with tomatoes yeah and oh you know what gosh. same with peppers like red pep bell peppers mm -hmm. um sometimes i'll just cut them up and people will be like oh my gosh this pepper is so good it's like yeah because i paid i paid the three dollars for the organic one yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, sometimes the birds eat them because <laughs> this, it's the strawberries that are hard to protect. Mm -hmm. because, They're really yeah. hard to protect. Yeah. I know. Oh my gosh, David. His house in Nantucket. I still haven't gone, but I want to. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so beautiful. We'll do an episode from there if you invite us. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Simply Seasonal in Nantucket. <laughs> On it, David. <laughs> Love you. Um... Yeah, and, uh, and that color, like we talked about too, is so rich and uh, <laughs> love you, David, bye, um, is so rich in antioxidants and flavonoids and all of these rich, any, like I just said antioxidants, but the, the healing properties and capabilities of berries because of that rich color mm -hmm. and, and all foods phytonutrients. have Phytonutrients. Phytonutrients. Yes. And all foods have this capability, right? Because, you know, just because they're not a berry doesn't mean they don't have it, but even like looking at some parsley, like how deep green, it's sometimes deep it's color. almost bluish green, like yeah. you can see how deep that is. So and all yes, foods, we have parsley on hand at all, <laughs> at all times, you just <laughs> snack on it. Um, 
because what that property is really doing is that's giving us this ability to fight off any free radicals and things like that in the body. So when we're constantly bringing these foods in right now, bring in tons of berries um, or any of these fresh springtime things because they're really vibrant, full of color, which is gonna help us fight off these free radicals. And in a world where the toxicity is so high in our environment, the toxicity in our food is so high, like we said, carcinogenic pesticides sprayed on them, carcinogenic herbicides, carcinogenic everything sprayed everywhere. We're eating that constantly. Mm -hmm. We need even more than ever. Just sterilizing them to package them to stop for the growth, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's like, whoa, yeah. there's so much going on. The yeah. irradiation and all of that. So it's even more important that we're eating these rich, colorful foods mm -hmm. because they're gonna be higher in the flavonoids and the antioxidants, which like we said in our um, episode, antioxidants mean they antioxidize things so when things are oxidized they're missing an oxygen molecule which is also called a free radical so an antioxidant has an extra oxygen molecule and can donate it to turn that free radical into a normal functioning cell mm -hmm. so when we're looking at things like cancer this is a big thing that's going on is that the cell health is getting jeopardized and oxidized through this process, which is now manipulating the DNA in the cell and the reproduction of the cell, so the cells can start to reproduce over and over again, right? And then the body, if it's congested because of all of this toxicity from our stress, our environment, and our food, it can't clear that stuff. So then that those cancer cells will stay in the body and start and growing reproduce themselves. and reproduce themselves. Abnormal cells. So this is the start of cancer. And like Kara says, we're currently, I have cancer cells in my body right now, but because I'm doing the best that I can to support myself, more than likely my body's gonna get rid of it. The more antioxidants I'm bringing in, the more that cell damage is gonna get repaired. So this is how we can currently prevent and we're currently all fighting treat mm -hmm. cancer mm -hmm. um, as we're going through our daily uh, lives. And mm -hmm. even if we have a diagnosis, you know, we want to help support the detoxification pathways so that the bad cells can get out, also just toxins in general can get out, increase energy flow throughout the body, right? Even emotionally, increasing more of that emotional energy flow, getting things out of the body, not holding on mm -hmm. to that stuckness, right? Mm -hmm. Because that stuckness turns into toxicity, right? Which is part of the disease of cancer. Um, so bringing in these berries, high antioxidant foods, help repair, restore, mm -hmm. help the body the detox. Toxins. It's a whole thing. Good fiber too. Great fiber. <laughs> we're getting ready for our yeah, fiber we're about episode. To, <laughs> we're about to film our episode on fiber and poop and gut health. It's going to be really fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, another thing is, okay. Um, this word phytonutrients and antioxidants, it's like we didn't even hear about them until the last 10 years. It's kind of new in the food science world, which is really interesting. Um, I think food science in general is um, really yeah. new. <laughs> It's yeah, new. The Western um, perspective. So it's really interesting because it's like we never heard these and then all of a sudden it was like antioxidants, phytonutrients, and it's like, well, what are these? And basically we can just think that like very simplified like Megan touched on was like, well, went very deep onto, just think of them as color. It's like, do you want to live your life in black and white <laughs> or do you want to live in color? So mm -hmm. black and white is like this two-dimensional, flat Stanley kind of world or do you want to live in this like really colorful, over the rainbow, three-dimensional, four-dimensional, you know, get into it and make, you know, just living life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. Totally. And that's when it comes to common sense, tapping into your intuition, and simplifying health. It just makes sense, mm -hmm. right? I mean, most of the stuff we talk about isn't complicated and you're probably having a lot of aha moments. Even we have aha moments. We're like, oh, of 
course, because it taps into your common sense. Right. So you already know the information. Know We're just un unraveling. Yeah. It, right? Yeah. Because it's just like, oh, this makes sense. Of course, and you're more attracted to it, and you know, it, it just it's seasonal and it's right here for you. So of course, that's going to be the food that's good and healthy for you at this time, and not you know six months ago, and you know all this stuff is really common sense, and it's a very flavorful way of living life. It's a colorful way of living life. Mm -hmm. It's a whole way of living life. Shelby says, okay, I'm going to buy organic strawberries right now. Oh, nice. And it's, I mean, sometimes I go, should I just get the conventional ones? Because you look at the price difference, and sometimes it's a huge price difference. Mm -hmm. um, but when you think about, okay, do I want the ones that are covered in chemicals? Or do I... <laughs> No. I, you know, maybe we just don't think of it as choice, especially when it comes to strawberries, right? So like, yeah, they're almost yeah. like a non-negotiable because okay. they're number one on that list. Yeah, you just you're just eating probably more of the chemical than you are eating. It's hurting you, harming you more than than, than hurting you. Yeah, so yeah. then there's no yeah. point. Yeah, it's kind of like farmed salmon. Mm -hmm. You're better off not even eating it. Mm-hmm. It's know. sad. That's an episode we'll do. Yeah. Oh. It sounds so sad right now. But we'll do a fish episode. So that's we'll do a fish episode. The summer, fishing, gone fishing. Are you, go yeah. Have you gone fishing? <laughs> Are you even watching this because you're fishing? <laughs> but you're foraging for berries, maybe. Um, yeah. So, and if you haven't watched our episode, our radio show that we did last week, you should go on and watch. We got mm -hmm. interviewed on, on an internet radio. You can tap through it. Um, through iHeartRadio, Spotify. We have the link right on our website under our media tab, so you can check it out. Mm-hmm, all of our media stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and I think I just, um, if you have any questions, people that, who are on, please type them in. But, um, but I think just in general, because again, going back to the seasonal thing, um, where you live in the world at a certain time of year tells you the foods that you should be eating. And right now, berries are it, right? Berries are everywhere. So this is something you want to indulge in, have it as a dessert, mm -hmm. um, cook with them, throw them in your smoothies. And right? we're also starting to see pineapples and mangoes and papayas, which mm -hmm. we talked a little bit about in our video, mm -hmm. um, which are also seasonal in the tropics right now. So, you know, if you're, um, right now it's, I think, snowing in Colorado. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I'm seeing like crazy snowstorms all over the place, like unseasonably. Um, you know, you probably don't want to jump into those right now. Um, but here in Texas, you know, go for it. Like, um, we're feeling the tropical weather. <laughs> I was so guilty of this. So when I lived in Connecticut and was going to culinary school in New York City and I was hopping on the train and I would make myself a smoothie in the morning thinking, oh, I'm so good. Healthy. I'm having, <laughs> and I went to a natural um, you know, uh, Natural Gourmet Institute, which is all about food and healing. Um, and we ended up covering this in the school of like, what, when are you eating what? I would have frozen pineapple, spinach, you know, like almond butter, probably coconut oil as well, chia seeds. Like if you looked at my smoothie, you would say, oh, that's the perfect smoothie. For right? the beach. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh my God. And here I am, someone who runs really cold. I had my parka on with the like furry hood and I'm like you know trudging through the snow some days like walking <laughs> I'd walk like thing. two miles in Manhattan <laughs> to get to my culinary school drinking yeah this like mason jar full of mostly tropical foods and what am I doing to myself I'm right. I'm in a snowstorm right. having pineapple you and should coconut. be sipping on hot bone broth yes exactly that should have been my breakfast mm -hmm. not a cold smoothie so I see this all the time and I see this with nutritionists who I follow on Instagram who I love but it kills me when I'm seeing them sick. chugging these smoothies and sick and you can even see it in the eyes like that dark circle you know it's just like you're sick you're cold you're depleted don't give yourself a smoothie in the middle of winter this is good for the spring the summer when things are warming up so really it's just like Bottom line, berries are like such a great thing to say, okay, they grow more in the Northern Hemisphere or in the colder areas. This is a time for us, like Kara said, it's, it's the, the first- Transition fruit. Transition fruit, it's the first fruit episode we've done because mm -hmm. there really isn't much fruit during the winter other than citrus. Um, so yeah, so just pay attention to where you're living and what foods are growing when and 
why they're good for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're simply seasonal. They're so seasonal. And um, and we're gonna, we're, we we have to wrap all this up in like one piece, but um, just talking about our simply seasonal philosophy. But so it's like in Megan's case, like even though that was a healthy food, you eating that at that time was not healthy. It was actually hurting you it's more hurting than me. being. Yeah, I, I was mean, getting it, adrenal fatigue massively and not realizing it. Because I was also mostly vegan then, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I love my school. It was a vegan culinary school, but, like, that's great. But I need to be eating more meat. And I love vegetables and stuff. I could eat them all day. Um, but, yeah, so giving myself more adrenal fatigue, cooling myself down. My kidney element was like, eh. Yeah. But it's just so interesting to think, like, oh, wow, a pineapple spinach smoothie can be unhealthy. Mm-hmm. And it could be. It is. That's This is... That's what we're saying. Yep. It's crazy. But it makes common sense at the end of the day. So yeah. that's what we're really tapping into. Yeah. Don't eat a pineapple in the winter. Well, thank you guys for um, joining us. Um, those of you who are joining us, thank you, Shelby, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, we are off to uh, record another episode. We will be, we are keep cranking them out every Monday. We're going to keep these um, conversations going on Thursdays because we really um, like them and really help us talk more and deeper into our topics, which is really um, completes us. (laughs) Yeah, the videos sometimes are a little too short and can't touch on everything we want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. So join us Monday. Sign up for emails if you haven't already, simply-seasonal.com. Sign up for emails so it goes straight into your inbox. And then Thursdays, listen to the live Q&A so that you get more information. Mm. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks for joining us. (laughs) We'll see you guys later. Okay, bye. (laughs) Bye.